Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are y'all? Good. Awesome. Great. Awesome. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. I'm coming. I'll, I'll be there in a minute. Give me a second. <laughs> How is everyone? Good morning, Chatter. Good, good to talk to you there. Let me actually make sure my chat box is open and going. So tell me some of highs. You went home last night or you are home every day with this fun stuff. And you were thinking about what an amazing day we had and said, man, I should have said this as my ha ha. This was amazing that I thought of. Anything else come up for you last night after thinking about the day that was uh, in that ha for you? Three to four hours on references. Three to four hours on references. Best time you can use. Again, the person is going to show you the best version of themselves. <laughs> They're going to be the best they've ever looked uh, during the interview phase. So the only way you can really get to know them is to go back for people that they have worked for for longer periods of time or have known them for longer periods of time to see who they truly are. Never skip references. Never skip references. Thank you, Michael. What else? All right, we're just ready to get done. Is that it? Ready to, ready to bring this home? So let, let's recap the process, right? So the process first and foremost is put together a picture of what you're looking for. Put together a picture of what you're looking for. Love the fact that the questions dig on a deeper side of the individual. Awesome, awesome, thank you. Um, again, it's all about digging deep. Uh, we'll, we'll come to that as we do the recap. So. Put together a picture of what you're looking for. What's the role? What's the role in the organization? What's their tasks? What's the behavior? Where do we find those job descriptions and job profiles? Yes, KW Connect. Thank you for, Mike, you were about to say that, weren't you, Mike? Did I jump on you? <laughs> KW, KW Connect, you go on there, you go to career visioning, go to the materials. You've got all the job descriptions you could ever need. You also should have gotten that in the email from Emily the other day. I'm not able to unmute myself. Uh, try again. You should be able to. Try again, Mike. Are you able to unmute yourself? Yeah, no, I am now. I just was saying. Right. Cool. So, so put together a picture of what you're looking for, number one. Number two, lead generate at a high level. And how often should we be lead generating? How often should, be, should you be lead generating for talent? I, I, read, I read your lips, Mary Beth, all the time, right? All the time. You're always lead generating. You're ch checking yourself, you know, who, who, are you, who, who might be right for your downline, who's right for your team. Um, and you never know when you're going to need someone. I, I, I have a, a buddy of mine who, um, who, who had this admin in place. Uh, he spent six months, seven months getting her up to speed. Uh, finally had her up to speed. He was getting ready to take on a new opportunity to become an OP. And right as he was ready to do that, the admin quit unexpectedly on him. And he had to go back and recreate the wheel and go out and find a new admin. So always be lead generating because you don't know when someone is going to go on to a different opportunity or change their place or not work out. So you always want to have a bench. You always want to have a bench. So you always want to be lead generating. Uh, so, so you lead generate for talent. How many resumes do you want to try to assemble for the executive assistant role? What's the goal and how many resumes you want to assemble for the executive assist assistant role? 150. 150. 150. Mike, Joe, thank you so much. 150 to put them through that funnel, right? Out of 150, review the resumes of uh, 45, perhaps 40, 45. Uh oh, Dan and Ridgefield is getting ready to go rob a bank. I saw him put a mask on. <laughs> uh, hopefully, 40, 45 that you can bring to a phone interview. Of that, 15 to 20 that you can bring to a KPA uh, validation and hopefully put three to five through the process. You're a dofi this morning. That's servant leadership at its finest, Dan Raposo. The guy that rated me as a one the other day. Thanks for that, by the way. Thanks for that. I, I've had a few people say to me, who's that guy that rated you as a one? Guy, that was Dan Raposo, a, a, a former team leader that's now a dofi this morning. That's what happens when you give me a one on a Zoom call. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed your I just, I just hit enter before I could hit the, the zero. That's all. <laughs> I, I hit one and I hit enter too quickly. That's what happened. Hey, I hope you enjoy your career as a dopey, buddy. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, so hopefully you can get three to five people that you can uh, get to the, uh, the reference checking stage with in order to get the, the best candidate, right? We want the best candidate, 
not the best available candidate. There's a difference between the two. So uh, lead generate for resumes, then take them on to that, that brief eight to 10 minute phone call, right? And what are we doing on that eight to 10 minute phone call? We are validating the resume, we're validating the track record, and we're validating some of their skills and behaviors. Um, Chris, Christian, love that, 150, bam. If they don't fit for an admin, they, be, they can become agents in your downline. It's amazing. Um, and, and here's my favorite script. And, 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 and we have that, that exit gracefully script, right? And what's that exit gracefully script sound like? Who wants to read the exit gracefully script? <laughs> I don't believe this role would be the right fit for your tremendous talents. Um, let's keep in touch so if anything else comes up. And by the way, do you have any referrals for me? Um, but, but, but if you find someone that's not a great fit, but they're really outgoing, here's something I want you to write this down. Have you ever considered a career in real estate? Have you ever considered a career in real estate? So you might come across someone there that uh, is very outgoing, very pleasant, that would be much better for your downline than they would be in the executive assistant role. I've talked to teams over the years that while they're searching for somebody, um, yeah, there you go. Have you ever thought about how great you'll be in real estate? Uh, you said that while I was typing. Thank you, Christian. Um, people that, that, that are lead generating for, for a, a role on their team tend to build their downlines astronomically. For agents that are looking for a buyer's agent, so let's talk about that for a second. If I'm looking for a buyer's agent, I might go and target every agent in my market that, that closed between two and five trans buyer sides in the previous 12 months and just talk to them. I might come across a lot of people from my downline in those conversations uh, that in order to find that one that will be the right fit for my business. Uh, Billy, I know she unmuted. Do you have a question or did you just unmute in case you want to talk? Yeah, just in case I wanted to talk. <laughs> Live mic, just be careful. <laughs> um, so so uh, it, it's a great opportunity to build your downline during that lead generation phase. So we, we then take them to that, that, that phone interview where we validate the resume, validate the history, validate the track record, validate the skills and behavior. What are the six things? This is a live question. I'm not going to answer, so I'm going to wait. I will sit here in silence for 20 minutes if I have to. Uh, what are the six things you're looking to gather information on during the CV process? The inside the triangle, the outside the triangle. Inside the triangle. Think, behavior, uh, track record. Thank you, culture. Joe. Th thinking, culture. Culture, yeah. Skills. Knowledge, knowledge <laughs> skills, and track record. Not that I'm reading. <laughs> Right, knowledge, skills, track record. So again, I want you to get really comfortable with, with, with this image, with this picture in order to stay focused on the things you're looking for. You're looking at the behavior, thinking, and culture, and why is that inside the triangle? Why is that inside the triangle, not outside the triangle? There's a reason. You can't, fix, you can't change that. You can't change this. These are hardwired. These are hardwired. These are all things you can change, cultivate, and teach. You can't teach behavior, thinking and culture right so so these are the six things we're looking for throughout the process so we're gonna have that phone call and, and do the resume validation and then from there our decision point is either exit gracefully or what where do we go to from there the interview. We, either, we either exit gracefully or we send the KPA. KPA Thank you. We send the KPA and we set up the, the KPA uh, uh, um, validation. So again, we choose either exit gracefully or send the KPA. Carly, do you have a question? I see your hand up or you just give me a high five virtually. High five. Um, do you think it's better to hire somebody who has a lot of experience and has everything on the outside of the tri triangle or doesn't have what's on the outside of the triangle so that way you can train them the way you want them to work. I'm actually just kind of, I, 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 of course you refer back to the triangle as I was, uh, as I was, over Mike, so. move over, Mike. There you go. Um, uh, skills and uh, what are we doing? Knowledge. So mm -hmm. your question is what, what do I think is more important? What's inside or what's outside? No, is it better to hire somebody who has the outside experience or hire somebody who doesn't so that way you can mold them to what you want them to be? I, I think that depends on where your business is at. Um, 
And again, this goes to the three types of talent. What are the three types of talent? The Proven, three types of emerging. Oh. Um, um, potential. Potential. Potential, emerging, or, or, or proven talent. So, Carly, at the end of the day, if I can afford it, I'm going to go up to proven talent all day long. I'm going to go up to proven talent all day long. Um, but again, if I look at an executive assistant, if I'm going after a 20 year, a uh, highly qualified executive assistant. Um, it, it might cost me sixty to seventy-five thousand dollars in total compensation for that person. Uh, I had one a couple of years ago that was amazing, but it would cost seventy thousand dollars to get her. So it depends on where you are in your team building. If this is your first time hiring an executive assistant, I'm going to go with Jessica. Um, I, I'm going to look for for this, and then train the hell out of everything else. Because again, if you're going for a potential talent that has these things and not these, that's the person you can get with a 30, 32 guarantee and a 45 to 55 uh, potential compensation model. So again, it depends on your budget. You know, it depends on your budget, depends on what you're looking to do and, and where your business is at. Does that answer the question? It does. Out of these, out of these, which one do you think I look at the hardest. The track record? Track record. Because I just because I just finished that word, right? And you knew I was gonna go there. To no, me, we're all really well, no. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, what do you say? No, I say the track record is proven, right? I mean hindsight's twenty twenty. You can go back and see what they got rather than what they're gonna tell you they can do, right? Yeah, you know, and, and I might have someone who's 22, 23 year old. They're 22, 23 years old looking for a job. What, what do you think I'm looking for there with track record? Because they, they don't have a, Consistency in how long they stayed at a job, right? I mean, well, 22, 23, they might not have had a whole lot of jobs. Yeah. So, yeah. so I might look at, uh, like we had with, with the guy from uh, Rutherford yesterday. They uh, did, did they like, start working at eight years old? School, stuff like that. Yeah, if they start working at eight years old, 10 years old, 12 years old, what do they do in school, right, Dan? Were they on sports? Were they varsity? Were they JV? Were they in student government? What role did they serve in student government? Were they in a play? Were they the, the ensemble? Or were they the, the star, Mary Beth? So, um, absolutely. But sometimes you, then you have to check the motivation because Adele used to always say, zebra doesn't change its stripes. Yeah, And that's so true. And then we had a situation with somebody who at the time of life he was in, his career was amazing. He was the right person. He was a team leader for sure. He could build that. But what happened was the mother passed away and then he got all this retirement money and life just changed for him. And he thought like, I want to be on the golf course. But I don't want to be building stuff anymore. So you have Can to you challenge your the life. Can you meet Moses? Can you meet Moses? Um, Moses, we need to mute you if you're if you can hear me. If you can, mute me, thank you. Yeah, I'm um, muting myself. Sorry about that. No, no worries. Um, so, 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 Mary Beth, I mean, you're right. So, all that life track record cycle and, and people change. You know, what, what did I say before? Behavior is, um, but there are three scenarios where where behavior might change. What are those three scenarios? And death, <laughs> death, the <laughs> pandemic. <laughs> High five to Joe DeVito is my favorite person right now. Well, well played, Joe. Um, pandemic, yes. Uh, death, divorce, and, and giving birth. Um, and, and when I use the term death, it's not their own death because that definitely changes behavior. But it's the death of someone <laughs> around them. It's the death of someone, someone around them. If they lose a family member, especially with, with some money there, um, that, that can change someone. But, but with motivation, if I'm looking at track record, I can see motivation and track record, can I? Is this safe to say if someone played varsity basketball or played a division one sport at a high level, they're probably a motivatable person? You know, is it safe to say if they served as president of their student council or, or was consistently the star in the play, that probably ties pretty well to motivation? So, so again, the reason I bring up some of those, those old school comments is track record if you're going off someone that's potential talent, you've got to go back a little bit farther in their history in order to see where that track record comes into play. Carl, is your hand still up or did you put it up again? Okay. Uh, Phyllis, you're muted. Did you want to say something? Um, yeah, I was, it was just interesting. I've been CV'd um, a few times and I just don't think that um, the people that were doing the CVs didn't go back far enough to see, know when I was a track star. And when I was, um, you know, president of different organizations, I don't just don't think that they 
did it. So it's really um, a game changer for me to know this in terms of me looking for people on my own team. Just go back far enough to see who this person is. That's so crazy, yep. especially if they're old, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, if you were a state champion in a sport, that just doesn't go away in who you are. You know, that, 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 that to me is a first sign of someone's first experience with talent. And, and that's going to carry into a lot of other things they do in life. So right. um, I, I, I love finding people that played college sports at a high level, even high school sports at a high level, because what I then do is where else in their life did that come up? You know, right. where else in their life did they, did, they, did they get that gold medal? Where else in life did they get to stand up on that stage? Mm -hmm. Because people that do that at a young age, it shapes who they end up becoming later. So that's right. awesome, Phyllis. I knew I liked you. I knew I liked you. So hey, um, and after your story yesterday, Michael, I couldn't get past it. I, it was amazing. And you know what? I have to say this, Michael, I thought you were like privileged out of, grew up privileged. <laughs> of Boston. Well, there were some aspects, but I mean, privileged out of Boston. And when you told that story, man, it broke me down. And I was just so happy to hear that about you. Not that you went through that, but just to know the individual you are. I, I look at you differently now. Well, th thank you, Phyllis. I, I appreciate that. Now, not, not to dig deeper in that, but I'll share one more thing. My parents are still broke. Uh, my parents still have no money. My parents still have no debt. There is going to be no money left to me in a trust. Uh, I will tell you, I pay my father as a personal employee to help cover. I pay for health benefits for the last seven years. I cover the health benefits. I pay the mortgage. I pay the mortgage on occasion. So, so, so to, to me, Gene, but thank you. So to, to me, they blessed me by giving me the opportunity in my life. So I'm still paying them back for that, and probably till the day they die. So, um, so thank you for uh, letting me share my story. Adele Demaro's in the house. What's up, Adele? Oh, good Lord. No, this is such, it's so good. I, I missed some of it yesterday. I, I apologize, because I've taken this many times, and you're doing a great job. So two things. Thanks. One is- well, wait, wait, come on. Am, I, am I doing this the way you taught me? Because everything I do well, I learn from you. You know that, right? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Don't believe him. Don't believe him. Um, two things. Number one is uh, when you do career visioning and it's a young person, and I just did this with Gina, in fact, we're hiring someone, you know, the lifespan, and thank you, Phyllis, for that's bringing this up. When you have that's someone that you're sorry. interviewing that's a little more seasoned, I called it seasoned. I'm very seasoned, right? Hey, Gina, you mute your mic again? Who's that? Sorry, okay. sorry, though. Right. No, it's okay, it's fine. But I was going to say two things. When you have someone that's young, young for me is 25, 28, and you have someone like myself that's seasoned, the career visioning um, is very different. And you need to really look at that because the lifespan, and I, so I always use the paper and I'm writing, you know, uh, many times somewhere in their 30s, they had one of the three events. They got married, they had a baby, so on and so forth. So it's really important. When it's someone young, you need to really talk a lot about high school, and college and what part-time jobs they had. We talked to someone and, and we looked at each other, Gina and I, because she said, I worked in the Freehold Mall for eight years. I know everybody around here and I know their behavior. If yep. I can take them on, I can take anybody on. Mary <laughs> on. So that's one on, on someone that's younger. The second thing is- wait, wait, Let me just add to that, Adele, if I can add to that real quick. I like people that work in retail and restaurants and bars. Retail restaurant and bars are used to working their tails off. They're used yeah. to working nights and weekends. They're, 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 they're hard workers. They got great work ethic. So and again, especially, all types. give me someone that worked in a restaurant bar through college and graduated in, 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 in under six years. <laughs> uh, and, and again, those are things that I look for that do very, very well. The second thing is on uh, firing. So um, if you have a superstar, you have someone that's continually growing, um, events do happen. And, you know, one of the things that we hear all the time is uh, hire slow, fire fast. Yep. Um, those of you that know me, I am not a fire fast. You really got to go some to get on my nerves because I feel that I married you and in a relationship, you know, there are going to be good times and bad times. And so when the situations happen, um, a parent passes away, something happens, a kid, you need to really step back. Um, most of you know that we, you know, we're opening a funeral home. My daughter's a funeral director. And if you get a chance, look up the seven stages of grief. 
because that will help you tremendously from mm. the shock to the anger to the um and i can't right now i'm not thinking about this but i, I you know um uh, when they come to uh just through the whole seven steps that they they come to realization and you will help that individual to come back and be the superstar they are you know uh, we always say better the devil you know you know so yeah. just before you're quick to say see you're nice to be you um <laughs> most of my team leaders are with me forever you can't get rid of me you know and, and, and you know, even, even when they're out of business with you they still can't get rid of you adele because you're still in their lives right also true everybody comes <laughs> home <laughs> i'm the kw mom and i'm very proud of a lot i'm so proud of of wonderful people that have come through my life and are still in my life yeah. i plan on retiring somebody take my place so, so let me comment on two things. I want to comment first on uh, something you said, hiring slow, firing fast. I, I see Jennifer's comment. If you don't fire fast, you're being unfair to your hire, They're not right for the job. Here's the time, the time I typically fire fast is in the first 90 days. And we're going to talk about that today where, you know, I'm, I'm going to talk about day 89 a lot. If they're not accomplishing the 30, 60, 90, I'm going to fire them at day 89 because in most states, what happens at day 90? What happens at day 90 in most states is you're, not, you're now responsible for unemployment for that person. Mm -hmm. Anything before 90 days is at will. You can fire easily. Um, after 90 days, I, I, I don't fire fast either because, again, the bigger you get, the more you realize you've got to document. You've got to give a, a, a PIP, I call it, or a performance improvement plan. So typically in my world, um, I might take someone from – Employed to unemployed within 30 to 45 days, but it's not going to be a surprise. They're not going to be blindsided by it because I've communicated and documented and put things in writing to let them know that they weren't performing. So again, know that when, when you've got someone beyond 90 days, before you fire them, please, please, please talk to your market center, talk to your leadership in your market center to make sure you're doing it the right way. Uh, I've seen teams not thinking about it, put themselves in a predicament because they didn't build their file up to terminate the right way. You can, once you pass 90 days, it's a little bit more complicated. So I just want to kind of comment on that. I also want to comment on something Ariel said. Uh, I'm 28, was interviewing candidates much older than me. How do you get past someone talking like they're your daughter? Ariel, my first management gig, I was 23 years old. Um, and everyone I was managing, average age was 57, 58. The highest was 70. Um, so it's, it's interesting. It's interesting when you're, you're managing people that are older than you. And, and it's different. I was managing independent contractors. I was managing a, a sales office. Um, when, you're, uh, when, when you're managing employees, it's a little bit different. They can talk to you to some degree. But there's going to be times where you kind of put them back in line to remind them that you are their boss. So it, you've got to find that line of, of respectful versus disrespectful. You know, and oftentimes I set up my employees a script. Uh, my, my script looks like this. Hey, I've got something I need to talk to you about. Whenever someone hears me say, I've got something I need to talk to you about, what I'm warning them of is we're about to go into a very awkward conversation that's going to be a little bit uncomfortable for both of us. Um, so, so I kind of set that up in my win-win conversation in order to let them know that um, this conversation may not be fun for either one of us. So uh, again, uh, Jessica, thanks for your response to, uh, to Ariel. Uh, I love the chat box. You guys are doing a great job of, of supporting each other in the, in the chat box. All right, ready to jump into the content for the day? Joe, you have something you want to say before I move on? Yeah, uh, uh, if you wouldn't mind, just spend a couple of minutes on this. So I wanted to know if there's something I could have done different or uh, if this is going to lead into the 30, 60, 90 component of career visioning. And that is I had a candidate who I took on board who had 100% KPA, had zero skill, zero knowledge, amazing track record, 25 years of leadership, manager, bed, bath, beyond retail, everything you can think of, 100% match uh, for the first 30, 60 days she killed it you know we we had 10 listings together that we shared on once 90 days hit ironically 100 days it went downhill i later found out she was clinically depressed and she felt that she couldn't do real estate because she was severely overweight so i guess my question is in terms of this process what can we do to uncover things like that without getting in trouble right so because these are very awkward questions to ask and then now you you invested all of this time you think you got a great candidate potential talent and then it's like poof it like literally blows up 
so go, anyone feel free to answer this question. Where do you, th where do you think I'm going to go to in the queer visioning process to possibly uncover that? What question do you think I'm going to ask Joe? Track what record. question do you guys think? What's that, Michael? Track record. No, no, no. To, to, to talk about some of that, that flat lines at 100 days. Uh, my question for you, Joe, is on a scale of 1 to 10, um, 10 being amazing, 1 being horrible, how would you rate how well you check the references? Oh, I, 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 I'm probably a 10. I, I, really? I spoke to 35 people. Wow. I, when you said that, when you did the references, I did the references. Everybody oh, spoke to her amazingly because she had, so let's put it this way. She, she took, the last job she took, she took seven stores, right? She was responsible to take seven stores that were underperforming and six out of the seven, she turned around to be profitable. That was her, 100% her. So she had an amazing track record in terms of leadership. Zero knowledge, zero skills, but 100% track record and potential knowledge. First 60, 90 days, great. After 90 days, poof. So, so, so let me ask you, I, I see a bunch of people throwing it up in the box. Uh, how'd you do with the life story? Well, she wanted a big change in her life. She was sick and tired of retail. She wanted something bigger. She was making, I think, sixty-five, seventy thousand dollars. She was relocated. Now, here's the big thing here: talking about, uh, you know, life events, death, and all that stuff. She got transplanted. She came from Illinois. Her husband was a, a regional manager for TJ Maxx and came to New York. So had zero. Um, oh boy, I got this thing here. Uh, get this off here. Hold on a second. So, so um, I, I see where you're going with it, Joe. So, I think. Life story may show up. Um, uh, you know, background record checking may show up. Here's the challenge, um, and I see people post in the chat box. Um, depression is an interesting thing. All right, and 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 career visioning, career visioning is about reducing the risk of hiring. It's never about eliminating the risk of hiring. It's impossible to eliminate the risk. So, what I do find is if you have someone that has some some emotional challenges. Going from a consistent pay where they got the same paycheck every week to going to a real estate agent where you wake up every day unemployed and whether or not you make money three months from now is in direct proportion to what you do that day. Not everyone emotionally is equipped for, for the this, right? For the this, for the, for, the, for the highs and lows. And, you know, I always like to ask someone, especially if they're joining my, my, my team, and, and I do agree with Beth. That's why I want to kind of hit on this a little bit. Um, I'm asking someone, you know, can, you, can you afford to go six months without getting a paycheck? You know, what, what, is your, what does your world look like? Are you used to, have you, has there ever been a time where you've gone six months without, uh, about, without getting a paycheck? So hey, wait, again, and just to add, Mike, just to add, I, did not, I was not quick to fire. I, 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 I was in business with her for three and a half years because I saw the potential. I saw the issues that were going on. I helped her out. I, I helped her with a membership in a gym to uh, lose weight. Uh, got her supportive in 15 years. She never really dealt with it. And now she's lost 30 pounds because she was uh, awesome. depressed with her weight. So I helped her. It's just that, you know, she just lost the desire to do real estate after a period of time. So I just was curious if I did anything, if I could have done anything different, or if this is just one of those situations where, you know, shit happens, right? Uh, again, again, number one, career vision is about uh, minimizing the risk. It's not about eliminating the risk. There's always going to be something that, that could come up that we can't plan for. I think when you're dealing with someone that's, that's got something like that going on, I like the fact you didn't fire her fast. Or someone who's dealing with that, I, I find it my responsibility uh, to help them through it, um, you know, to a fault. You know, sometimes I've actually helped, tried too much to where I couldn't help someone. So I think when you're dealing with someone in that situation, I think you got to kind of get your leadership involved. Um, maybe get her involved in something, some degree of coaching, um, you know, do whatever you can to support them. But, but ultimately people have to make a decision that's best for them and best for their lifestyle. I um, mean, and there's been times where I put so much pressure on people that they've decided to, to step down from the role because they realized it wasn't a right fit for what they needed at, at that point in their life. Make sense. Uh, I want to keep going because uh, I do want to make sure we get as much done by one o'clock as we can. Uh, so feel free to keep looking at the chat box. Um, so again, KPA, we go to KPA validation. What's the interview after the KPA interview? Thought process interview that goes into which interview? Help me out here. The third Life. interview. Thank you, Michael Garrett. Life story into which interview? 
I saw, Mary, I saw Mary Beth's lips move. That counts. Motivational. Uh, and then after motivational, there's three perspective points. What are the three perspective points? The group. Group interview, which is the most important. What's one thing you need to appoint as part of the group interview? Key, or a, like a fun person, whatever. <laughs> a social chair. Thank you, Mike Richardson. A social chair. Uh, definitely to point that to keep it from turning into a firing squad. After the group interview or before the group interview, what's that second piece that should go hand-to-hand -hand with the group interview? References. Reference check. Reference check. How many references do you ask for? Three. And how deep do we go? Three deep. At least three, at least three deep. And then after the, after the reference check, uh, what do we do next? We defense. set up the defense conversation, you get, get some of our peers together and, and defend our hire. And that's where we are right now. So now we get into the next phase of things, which is, which is the offer, which is the offer. So um, I'm gonna start first about the offer, where we're gonna kind of put together some ideas of what the compensation plan could look like. Uh, and then we're going to talk about um, wh what you do when you're actually ready to present the offer. All right. So Emily, I'm going to have you post those in about five minutes, just so you're ready. Um, so, so I'm going to call this compensation. All right. And, and what's typically something we always see. And again, we're looking at the executive assistant. We're looking at the executive assistant compensation plan here, right? Uh, what's typically something that is always included in compensation? Money. Salary. Based Thank you. Salary. 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 So I, I, I'm going to go to, I saw the question in the chat box before, W2 or 1099. How do you set the per person up from tax basis? Anytime you're trying to ask, do I do a W2 or 1099, there's one question I ask. That question is, this person you're hiring can they come and go as they please and work whenever they want? Can they come and go as they please and work whenever they want? So if you're hiring an executive assistant, what's your answer to that question? No. 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 You expect them to work Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. Monday through Friday, 8 to 4. So as soon as you have an expectation, it's got to be a W-2. You cannot require anything from a 1099 employee. A 1099 employee can come whenever they go, do what they want. In the traditional model, in the traditional model where your broker says, we expect you to do floor time and expect you to do open houses, that, believe it or not, teeters. That teeters on W-2 or 1099. Uh, I had an agent when I was working in the traditional company with yellow signs, I'm not going to say who it is, that, that, that got pretty frustrated with me because they said, you know, I said, I need you to do two open houses a month and three, four times a month. I'm not an employee. I'm not an employee. You can't require, you don't pay me benefits. You don't pay me a salary in, in, in their rights. So for an admin, Monday through Friday, nine to five, 40 hours a week, it's gotta be a W-2. The next question you gotta set up is exempt versus non-exempt. Which one's which again, Aaron? Exempt versus non-exempt, which one is uh, no overtime? Yeah, Ex exempt. exempt. So, so I always get this confused. So I always go to Aaron to ask that question. So, so when you're talking exempt versus non-exempt is, is exempt means uh, they might work more than 40 hours. They might work more than 40 hours, but you, you don't pay them overtime. Um, non-exempt means they work 40 hours. They work 40 hours. Uh, and if they work beyond 40 hours, um, uh, you, you have to pay them overtime. Now, for an executive assistant, especially if you're going to put a bonus plan together for the executive assistant, I, I think you can classify that EA. Uh, can you help? Anthony, we're going to mute you. Um, hey, guys, just so you know, if we find ourselves unmuting someone two or three times, I'm probably going to drop you from the call. Um, just because if you're not realizing it, you might not be fully engaged. So uh, that's just kind of a first warning. And as we said yesterday, for anyone that's on the call, the end of the day, what do you get? Cash, gifts, and prizes. Cash, gifts, and prizes. You get the videos. If you're on the call, the end of the day, you get the videos. The Michael Grant's car. 
Yeah, access to my GMC Acadia. Go for it, man. I used to have the cool Audi A7 until I had three kids in sports. Then I went to the GMC Acadia. Uh, um, yeah, you, you get a toaster. Now you, you get access to all the videos of the week as well as uh, I love the chat box today, uh, as well as all the videos I did during COVID. So uh, we'll be giving that to everyone that's on the call the, uh, at, the, at the end of the call. So if you're paying this person bonuses, I think you can argue uh, making them an exempt employee um, because they've got some additional opportunity um, uh, to, to earn beyond just the salary. So again, that's someone you might want to talk to an accountant or a legal professional about. So salary. What do you think? <laughs> you guys are killing me. You're still going. You're still going in the chat box. Uh, personally, I want a phobie. Who, who has thought about a phobie in the last three months? <laughs> Mike Richardson has a phobie. For those of you that don't remember, there was a time, I think it was the 80s, where there was like a vacuum haircut system where it sucked your hair up and cut it. Uh, and I can tell you, I've been thinking about the phobie a lot the last three months. What's the average salary? Uh, well, what do you think is the salary range to, to start? And let's just use um, potential slash emerging talent. Potential slash emerging talent. What do you think the salary is you're going to start this person? What role are we talking about? Executive assistant. I mean, I guess it depends on where you are in the country because Cincinnati, Ohio might pay a little bit less than uh, Manhattan, I'm hoping. Yep, yep. And again, as you're, as you're seeing the chat box, you're seeing 35 to 45, and a lot of that is geographic driven. A lot of that is geographic driven. Now, keep in mind, I want to make the compensation package 50 to 60. I want to make the compensation package 50 to 60 for someone that's going to help me accomplish my goals. I'm going to tell you for a potential or an emerging, it's going to be anywhere from 28 to 40. Anywhere from 28 to 40 is where I'm going to kind of set the baseline here. Because here's the thing. This is only a piece of it. So let, let's talk for a second about bonus. Uh, can I use someone as an example? Mike, you've been awesome in the last couple of days. So can I use you as an example? Can, I, can, sure. can you play with me? Uh, how many transactions did you do uh, 2019? 28, I think. So for easy math, can I round it up to 30? So if, if I'm hiring someone, I might keep their, their, their salary a little bit low, but I'm going to add a transaction bonus as part of that. So for instance, I might add uh, $100 per transaction. I typically do 50 to 100 here. $100 uh, per transaction from transaction one to 30. So let's just say I'm using 32,000 as a salary 100 per, 100 per transaction, I did 30 last year. <laughs> so that's almost another guarantee of $3,000, um, which is really makes this a $35,000 guarantee, right? So we're gonna lose this 32K, this is 3K. Yep. If, if I roll back from 30, then we're not working out. <laughs> so, so really, as much as it's a 32 salary, it's a 35 guarantee, Carly. That's paid out uh, in the month where the transaction closes. So if I have five transactions that close this month, they're getting a $500 bonus through payroll. $500 bonus through payroll. As far as payroll goes, uh, paychecks, ADP, um, they're typically about 40, 40 bucks a month, and they'll cover all of your taxes, your quarterly taxes, things like that. I, I've used Bank of America in the past. I could pay $15 a month through Bank of America for the payroll feature, where it'll make it very easy for me to do payroll and quarterly taxes uh, and W-2s at the end of the year. Um, so, Michael? so, yes. Michael? Very powerful. What's up, buddy? Uh, quick question, bud. I'm sorry. Um, when you hire somebody like that on a bonus situation and you're paying them on a per transaction basis, does that start from when they come in? Or what about stuff that's already – under contract, closing out, et cetera. Where does that, where does that demarcation begin? Great question, Barry. And, and let's talk about this for a second. The first 90 days. The first 90 days is, is the trial period. The first 90 days is the trial period. You, if they're not succeeding the first 90 days, I'm going to pull the ripcord at 89. I'm going to pull the ripcord at 89, so I'm not responsible for what? Unemployment. 
So I'm not responsible for unemployment. So, so what, what you can do, Barry, is this is the salary, this is the compensation. This is the bonus payout. This starts at 90 days. Uh, I, I like the idea of working a raise in 90 days in. Uh, and that's more for me than it is for them. W what do you think I mean by that? B behaviorally wise, DISC, D-I-S-C, what am I? What do you guys think I am? D-I-S or C? I'm I. <laughs> uh, I'm naturally an I with a trailing D. Over the last couple of years, my D's really come out. Um, but, but I'm naturally an I, which means I love everyone. I want to support everyone. I want to think the best of everyone. If I've got to pay them a bonus uh, or increase their salary at 90 days, that protects me from being too nice. If the person is not doing a good job, I'm going to have a real hard time giving them a bonus at 90 days or paying them uh, additional come 90 days. So, so Barry, in your case, um, you can say 90 days, the bonus kicks in and you just start paying them off and any closing that happens in that fourth month. Um, if you didn't integrate that as part of the bonus, but put that in as part of their original compensation package, uh, where you're giving them that override um, on it, in that case, would it begin with, in other words, first transaction that they put in, meaning a new listing, and then it's life expectancy? Or would it be for everything that they're dealing with, closing out, et cetera? See, I, I, I tend to be over generous, Barry. Um, that's kind of a fault I have. So, so if I've got someone coming in day one, again, in that case, I just might say this kicks in after 90 days. So come the fourth month, anything that closes the fourth month and on, you're going to start getting that bonus on. Um, I, I, I'm going to do that the, the first month. <laughs> you know, here's what I don't want to get into. I don't want to get into a world where I'm managing paperwork. Okay, this is closing. What date was it? Do they get it? Don't they get it? Aaron, Aaron Smith will tell you, I drive her absolutely nuts with bonus structures being too complicated. So if you say do it at any listing or contract that starts after they start, then that first couple of months of tracking the bonus is going to get, it's going to get really, uh, really challenging. It's going to get really challenging. So I think you just draw a line where it either starts at anything that closes after you've been with me for 90 days or draw the line today moving forward. Because here's the thing, Barry. They're going to support you on those transactions that are pending day one because it's going to be part of the training process. Right. So, so again, I, I might just start that, that bonus plan either from day one or at 90 days. I'm not going to get into anything that lists or goes under contract after you start. That just gives me something else to track. Yeah, it's just um, more complicated. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. yes. Without a doubt, Thank Carly. You. Yeah, without a doubt, Carly, it is different on rentals. You're not, you're not paying the same bonus structure on rentals. You know, Paying a hundred dollar bonus on a ten thousand dollar transaction is one thing. Paying a hundred dollar bonus on an eight hundred dollar transaction is something completely different. So, um, does that help? Carly, let's come back to that in a second. Um, wow, you guys have a lot of questions going on here right now. So, so again, a hundred dollars per transaction from one to thirty. However, you're hiring this. Are you hiring this person because you want more time or because you want to make more money? Oh, well, the executive assistant is more about more money. <laughs> the, 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 you want them to free you up so you can go and spend the time on doing revenue producing actions. When you're getting the buyer leverage and stuff like that is more about the time. So this person, I'm expecting this person um, to help me go higher. So I might set up, hey, I'm paying $100 per transaction on the first 30. That's what I did last year. If I don't do at least that this year, this isn't working out. However, if you help me this year, go from 30 to 45, I might pay a $250 bonus. A $250 bonus on everything really from, from 31 to 45. And then if this year you free me up so much that I blow it out of the water and I get up to 46 or more transactions, I might pay them a $500 bonus. A $500 bonus over 46 transactions. Now, here's the caveat. You gotta make sure you put this in the offer letter. Uh, these levels reset annually based on previous year's production. What I mean by that is if we get to 50 transactions this year, well, next year it's $100 from one to 50. Then 51 to 65 is different and 66 plus is different. When you get to 100 transactions, 
Well, it's 100 on the first 100 transactions. And then it goes up. You want to make sure you reset that every year because every year we raise the bar. You know, as you get more transactions, you're going to have to start putting money in other support systems. So you can't afford to pay these, these bonus levels at, at the same place in year two, year three. As your production increases, so does the floor to pay these bonuses increase. That makes sense? And Michael, so, also yeah. to make sure that you're putting that through payroll, because if you're paying that employee as a W-2, you need to pay your bonuses as W-2 also. Without a doubt, you, you put these through payroll, 100%. So again, I just might build out the vision. So again, there's 3,000 tied here. I'm going to do math for me 15 times 250. 15 times 250. Help me out. You guys all got a calculator that are on the phones? 30, 3750. 33,750? 30, yes. So, and again, maybe my goal this year is 60. So give me another 500 times 15, 7,500? Yep. Yes. So as part of the compensation plan, I'm now saying, hey, you know, Mike, if you help me hit my goal of 60 this year, you're going to make 35, 45, that's a $52,000 opportunity right there I just created. You see where I'm going? How are we feeling? Mike, if, if your executive assistant helped get you to 60 transactions, would you be happy to pay her $52,000 or him? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Again, assuming, I, that I, my, uh, assuming that my average dollar doesn't go down tremendously. <laughs> yeah. So, um, just so you guys know, I'm not going to get in this call on, um, on virtual assistants. Um, this is about finding and hiring talent for your business. A virtual assistant is a patch to get you from where you are to a full time. Uh, I, I, do, I personally do not believe um, the virtual assistants are the goal for everything. Virtual assistants are kind of you know, transitional support. If I've got an executive assistant that's kicking butt, that's running out of hours in a day, I'll pay for a virtual assistant for them to do some other things. Um, but I don't believe in bonusing virtual assistants. Um, Mike? Yeah. Uh, in terms of advertising for uh, an admin and compensation, um, how descriptive do you become in the ad in terms of what the compensation package is? Do you actually put, you know, base 30 plus bonus or do you just leave it open, leave it vague? Um, what would you suggest? Uh, I would typically do uh, salary range. Salary range is 28 to 40 based on experience with bonus opportunities. Okay. So again, salary range 28 to 40 plus bonus opportunities um, would, would kind of be the way I would phrase that. Okay. Right. Um, this is for emerging. How about proven talent? Again, proven talent. I'm probably going to put proven talent somewhere between 40 and 60. Proven talent is probably somewhere between, between, between 40 and 60 for that. Um, all right, so salary plus bonus opportunities. Is that everything you offer as compensation? By the way, Bill, you don't have to yell at me with all caps, man. What did I do to you today? Did I insult you somewhere? Woof. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> Getting excited, that's why. <laughs> okay, that's it. That's good. Um, so is, is that all you offer as far as compensation? Training. Yes. Yidlind. I hope I pronounced that okay. Training. Training and coaching. So I'm, I'm going to start with training. What training opportunities do you offer? Monica Reynolds, perfect assistant. Yep. So again, I can put that under training or coaching. Co so perfect with Michael Brand. Perfect assistant, career <laughs> visioning. Here's something we're trying to figure out. And, and here's an opportunity for you guys uh, in your world. If you have an EA that's rocking it, um, that, that is looking for, uh, we're, we're coming to that next, Lisa, I promise. Don't let me forget it, but we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Um, if you have an EA that's rocking it, doing an incredible job, that's looking for another opportunity, I'm looking to find three to four uh, high-level executive assistants that want to learn how to teach the four MREA admin classes. We've got four awesome MREA admin classes that I would love to be able to, to offer those as a region to all of our teams to help them train their team members. I need three or four great admins uh, that might want to get compensated $500 to $1,000 a day 
500 to 1000 dollars a day to teach those MRE admin classes. Um, so if you know of anyone that uh, that might do that, um, email kwrg27 at kw.com and we will set uh, set an appointment for that. Yes, Barry, this is outside the perfect assistant. So the perfect assistant is the six month coaching. In addition to that, we have four MREA admin classes. That, uh, that we're currently not teaching because we don't have any great instructors for that. So that could be other training you offer. Hey, what about mega camp and family reunion? The first, yeah, can't see bottom. Move it backwards. <laughs> How's that? That's awkward. Uh, <laughs> hang on a second. The problem is I can send it backwards, but it's going to get smaller. Bill, you got my joke. Uh, it's going to get smaller, so that's kind of what I got right here. Um, and... and Kind of, I'm scribbling here a little bit, so I don't know how great it'll be. But uh, so four MRE admin classes, perfect assistant coaching program. Hey, what about family reunion and mega camp? To me, family reunion and mega camp are bonus opportunities. Are bonus opportunities. If you succeed in your 30, 60, 90, then I'm going to bring you to mega camp when we have it again. <laughs> when we have it again. Um, now, now, what's the value of mega camp? Are you including uh, airfare and hotel? Yeah, airfare, hotel, registration. This is, <laughs> Mega Camp is a $2,000 value. Family reunion is probably 2,500. What, so, what success point do you do that at? What benchmark um, on the team, like numbers? So, so in, in the first year, in the first year, uh, it might just be achieving your 30, 60, 90. Um, in future years, I would make it transactional benchmarks, transactional benchmarks. So if we hit our goal in 2019, I will, I, I will cover the cost for family reunion in 2020. If we hit our goal in the first six months of 2020, I will take care of mega camp. So I would make their, the first year you might do it as part of training and getting them plugged into your culture and seeing the big picture. But beyond the first year, I would tie it to goal setting. Or if we hit 80% of our goal or 90% of our goal, you, 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 you might tie it somewhat to goal setting. But I, I do believe, and at market center levels, we're talking about the same thing. You know, family reunion and mega camp should be bonus opportunities. Because, I mean, let's be honest, going on a cool trip <laughs> to Dallas, to Vegas, to Florida, to Austin, um, is part of compensation. So uh, are you really against part-time admin? <laughs> Why am I against the part-time admin? Anyone want to anyone want to throw that out there? Why am I? Because you got to retrain them again. They don't. Hey, you got to rehire someone when you want a full-time admin because they might. Very not. rarely do part-time end up being your full-time. So in my experience, uh, they're part-time for a reason. Yes, in my experience, when you're ready for full-time support, that person can't do it. They're not a candidate, uh, which means you either have to fire them or hire a full-time person have one and a half employees when you might not be ready for it. So that's the reason I'm against part-time. I'm not saying don't do it. It's your business. I'm just saying from my experience, that's what I've come to find. It's but a pain just in the ass. Curiosity, I'm going by then, aren't, uh, even starting out with part-time, aren't these systems in place to be able to train the next person that much easier? Without a doubt, but if your part-time assistant is doing a good job, are you going to be able to fire them? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, but there's the thing. You See, couldn't at say that yes. Point, at that point, you might be bringing on the next person. You might be. Uh, again, I, I, I try to teach in definites and not maybe possibly. You know, again, the model is all about teaching to things that we know have a high percentage chance of working. Um, I haven't seen a high percentage of situations where part-time went to full-time. Okay. Again, v VA, VA is transitional support. VA is leverage to get you from where you are ready for uh, uh, a full-time. VA is about perhaps helping your, your full-time person with a project. So, um, again, I know there's lots of people that use VAs at a high level. If I'm paying someone, I want them right here. <laughs> because you know what? I tend to load them up. And when we talk about this in 30, 60, 90, there's one thing I'm looking for in the 30, 60, 90 process. That is threshold for pain. Threshold for pain. I want to see what their capacity is in the first 30, 60, 90 days. Again, here's the challenge. Virtual assistants 
are cheaper because you probably don't truly get the hours you get out of them. You know, if I can't see someone, how do I know if I'm getting 20 hours worth of work out of them? I've got full-time employees that I'm not sure if I'm getting 40 hours worth of work out of them. So, <laughs> um, so, so, so I, I, I tend to not teach to VAs. There's some people out there that teach at a high level of VAs. I don't teach to VAs and, uh, and, uh, and part-time because I, I want full-time. I want people I can manage. I want people I can put a lot on. I want people that I can see their capacity. Um, Michael, right. just real yes. quick, I'm going to throw, throw a monkey wrench. Oh, of um, course you are, Adele. Emily, get ready to mute Adele. Go. <laughs> you know, um, I, before I became an OP, I was a mega agent. Uh, always did 60 to 72 transactions, kind of like on the fly. And um, I had two part-time agents. They, it worked amazingly because I had one who was an SC. She was in at nine o'clock till two o'clock. And then I had my high I who oh, kind of with some D and she came in and she came in, I think at 10 or 11, whatever it was. And she was there till five. They worked together. If somebody went on vacation, there was somebody there. When Amy moved on to another opportunity, then Ann stepped in and then we got another person. Um, I loved it because there was always someone in. I loved that they each worked 25 hours and um, everybody knew everything that was going on. It, it, it worked for me. It worked really well. Let, let me ask you, as you went to replace them and hire around them, did you have any challenge finding people to fit into those hours? Um, I hired my son, so no, but <laughs> Dino said so, 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 so again, and again I, I've done a lot of that looking at the nine to one, nine to two, 11 to five. Uh, I always had a challenge finding people that fit into those certain schedules. So yeah. it's like, it's easy finding the part-timers, it's easy finding the full-timers. But it, yeah. again, all these things are great and, and that's worked for Adele. Oh, um, so VAs so are great, they work for a lot of people. Um, uh, part-time's great, they serve a purpose. Um, again, on this, I try to keep our focus narrow. Uh, mm -hmm. Regarding paying for someone's license, uh, I pay for it. I, I pay for the real estate school up front. Uh, we just got a lot of our staff and our market center's license because we were able to do that virtually during quarantine. So um, I got no problem paying that up front. So again, let's look at that. Real estate licensing. Real estate licensing could be worth $1,000 by the time we're done with school, new license activation, and that kind of stuff. So that, that's part of the compensation structure. Uh, do they have to work on a computer? Computer. Office. That's part of the compensation structure. What, what about health benefits? What about health benefits? Do you pay them? Do you, do you give them health benefits? There's plans out there you can. Yeah, yeah, there are. I'm a big believer of providing health benefits. I've always provided them. Um, Carl, let's talk, let's talk about this for a second. Let's have some fun with this. Um, we don't even get our own, I heard Carly say. Here's the challenge. Uh, here's the opportunity. Once you hire an admin, so first of all, let's go back a step. Create an LLC or an S Corp. Create an LLC or an S Corp. If you're getting into hiring someone, you want to have an entity that they work for, that they, they don't work for you. Um, as, soon as, as soon as you've got you plus an admin, you've got two people eligible for health benefits, you now qualify as a group plan. So as a single person, it's tedious to find health insurance for you. As soon as you have you plus one, you're now a group. You have two eligible people. Even if only they are taking health benefits, you've got two people that are eligible for health benefits. You can now go to any insurance carrier and say, I've got an LLC or an S Corp. I need to look at a group health plan. How are we doing? So I found this easier to, um, to, uh, to, to set up now. In New York, Connecticut, many states, your broker can pay you as an LLC or an S Corp. Your broker could pay you as an LLC or an S-Corp. New Jersey, we can't yet. Uh, and talking to the Real Estate Commission, they're supposed to change that in the next 12 months or so. I, I wish I could take a picture right now, Mary Beth. You were looking up and over. It was like the Brady Bunch. You were looking up at Michael Guerra and over at Richard Fallon. That was hilarious. I wish I could have videoed that. Um, Beth, I'm trying. I've been petitioning with the you state. You did video that. <laughs> we did video that. Um, so so, so we're, we're trying to work that. Uh, and Gabe, I'm going to tell you to be careful. Check with your, um, check with your accountant. 
You can't always just assign it to your LLC. You may have some tax fraud issues associated with that because by just assigning that, you're actually getting around unemployment insurance. So, so what I teach real estate agents to do is um, you're setting up an LLC as a lead generation company, as a lead generation company. Uh, all of your marketing costs, all of your advertising costs, all of your admin costs are going through that LLC. Um, and then you invoice yourself. And, and then you, you invoice yourself uh, as much as three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 per lead that closes. So in essence, you're selling the lead that closes from your, your lead gen company to, to you as a real estate agent. And that's how you're moving eighty, hundred, two hundred thousand dollars $200,000 a year as uh, an expense for you and an income for your LLC or S Corp. Joe DeVito, are you going to bring up an attorney thing here, man? Come on. No, no I'm going to help you out. So another way <laughs> you can do it is uh, you can say Michael Brand, comma, sole proprietor. Uh, which, which has the same tax effect as a corp in an LLC in states where you're not allowed to do it. But I'm incorporated in New York and it is a huge, huge, huge benefit to be able to write it. Because I recently got audited, I was just mentioning to Barry about workers' comp because I got rid of my, um, my admin and I stopped my workers' comp. Well, why should I pay workers' comp when you know, I'm going to rehire but I'm not ready for it? So um, they, they ask for all of these things, ta corporate tax returns, corporate this. They want to see if there's any outside vendors that you're paying. That's and then what I also learned is that I had to make sure if I have an outside person that I'm paying that they have workers comp if they have employees. So uh, being incorporated is a huge, huge uh, benefit for protection. Without a doubt. And again, like you said, you're going to pay them W-2. You've got to pay workers comp insurance that's not a lot of money um again this gives you the ability to do health benefits uh which is which is a huge opportunity so i'm not going to get into the weeds <clears throat> on moving from one llc to another assigning checks uh talk to an accountant talk to an attorney about the, the legalities of doing all that i just want to introduce the concept that create an entity of some kind whether it's a sole proprietor llc s corp every state is different um and, and find a way to move the money into that in a, in a legal uh, tax uh, safe way and, and then take the expenses from, from that entity. Questions, thoughts, comments on that before we move on. So again, I, I was talking about health insurance. I'm a believer of, of offering health insurance because I'm coming to that next Carly. I'm getting there. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm a big believer of, of offering health insurance because being sick uh, is only a reason to miss work for 24 to 48 hours. You know, I, I, I've got someone that, oh, I'm sick for a week. No, I'm paying for health insurance. That way, if you get sick, go to a doctor, get yourself, get medicine, and get back. Uh, I had one admin one year. Uh, her first, her third month, third month, uh, she, she, she calls out sick for a week. And she goes back after a week. I'm like, what the, oh, I had an ear infection. Um, did you not go to a doctor? I don't, I don't, I don't believe in going to doctors. Okay. You're fired. <laughs> you know, I, I pay for health insurance so you can heal quicker so we can get moving. If, if in your first 90 days I find that out, I'm not going to have any patience for that moving forward. So, Mike, what do you cap that number at? Uh, health insurance? Health ins that, yeah. Uh, gr great question, Joe. Uh, in the past, I've been over generous and have just paid it which gets really expensive. Um, I, I, I moved to the world of 250 to $400. Oh, very really? few, very very few employers pay a hundred percent of the premium. Very few empl employers pay a hundred percent of the premium. I've now moved to. I'll pay for the first two fifty to four hundred dollars. Uh, you could pay anything over that if you want your entire family on the plan. Put your entire family on the plan. I pay the first two fifty to four hundred. You cover the cost of everything over that. Now, most of my health plans uh, for a single person run about six hundred dollars run about $600 per person. So I'm covering on average 75% of the cost. They're covering 25% of the cost. But, but by setting a number, um, you're, going to, uh, you're going to have them take care of the cost as your health premium goes up every year. And keep in mind, I ch tend to change health insurance companies every two years. Every two years, I change the health insurance company in order to reset my, my health insurance cost because they tend to go up in such a way that they, they price themselves out within two years. Uh, vacation days, uh, vacation days. Uh, 
Emily, can you throw that up on the screen? Um, I tend to offer around 10 vacation days and five sick personal days. So from a paid time off perspective, they get 15 uh, days of paid time off a year. Um, now, that vacation time is accrued. Emily is throwing up a sample offer letter. This is a, a letter I use in one of my businesses. Uh, we're going to put a stamp on it that says sample, and I'm going to send this out to you to use. Uh, the reason I put sample is that I want you to just copy and paste it. Uh, get some some legal counsel on it, and, uh, and and you know make sure it's it's okay. Um, but in this, I lay out the salary, I lay out bonus, I lay out uh, health benefits, I lay out vacation time. So so typically, they they earn their first vacation days anywhere from three to six months in, and then they accrue. So go to the very top, and we'll scroll through it. Um, so dear so and so. Uh, we're extended to, to, to offer uh, extend this employment on behalf of the Kennedy Metropolitan. Position offered is that. Uh, this is a DAS offer letter. Uh, reporting to, so all my offer letters have an expectation of who they report to. Yes, Jessica, you will get all of this um, uh, to, to who you're reporting to, who they take direction from. The base salary is X, paid on a bi-weekly basis. It's considered exempt for purposes of federal wage hours. That means... Uh, you, you work with our senior salary meant to cover all hours worked, and that your salary will not fluctuate, uh, although you may work more or less than 40 hours a week. Keep going down. Um, now, I, I, I've, rem I've removed the confidentiality and not solicit from my DOFIs, but I keep it in place for my director of agent services, my assistant team leaders, MCAs, and team leaders. So I, I do have the confidential confidentiality and non solicit. Non -solicit. If you're a rainmaker, you may also have an additional clause in here regarding your database. Um, so this confidentiality and non-solicit uh, will, will also uh, relate to their database. Um, I, again, Ariel, uh, I do the exempt, so I don't pay overtime. Um, so, so again, that's something you can, you can look at. Uh, it is also contingent about that you're not being bound by some pre-existing restriction. Uh, I, I hired someone some time back only to bring them on board to find out they had a non-compete with a previous company, which limited what they could do for me. So I put a clause in here regarding uh, uh, pre-existing restrictions and exclusions. Uh, that the next section is, um, you know, in this business, <laughs> I covered the full cost of a single health insurance plan. So this includes being able to participate in the terms of our health plan, which is a single health insurance coverage, which will currently be at no cost to you. That gives me the flexibility to change it down the road. Uh, family member coverage is available at additional cost to you. Your personal sick and vacation day limit is 10. So again, this employee, I just did 10 total days off, not the 15. So again, you can do 10. To, uh, I, I, I never do less than 10 sick personal vacation days and rarely start someone at more than uh, 15. Yes, Barry, everyone on at the end of the call will get a copy of this. This next section will help you. Employment's considered at will, not for a specific, specified term. Either party can terminate at any time without cause. Again, after 90 days, you still need to build a file, but I'm kind of setting up my employment letter to give me some flexibility. <clears throat> uh, scroll down, Emily. Billy, I'm coming to that. No, this letter doesn't include that. You can close this. <clears throat> this letter doesn't include this. Um, can, uh, can you... Pull my email, the assistant team leader letter we just did. Um, I've, got, I've got another letter. Yeah, let me just read that. Uh, we'll send you a copy of this language as well. Um, this other letter, I just literally, I'm giving this out today. Where is it? Vacation. Uh, uh, I laid this out as accrued. You'll be entitled to five, five days of paid vacation after six months of employment. Vacation will begin to accrue monthly thereafter, after a rate of 6.67 hours per month. This is equal to 10 days vacation per anniversary year. So I lay out the vacation as an accrual that they earn over the course of their first year. Why would I do that? Why would I do that? So they can earn it. So, so they can earn it and not take it. I, I had an employee uh, just in the last two years. I brought them on board. They took all of their vacation time in the first six months 
sucked at their job and I fired them by seven months. So, uh, and unfortunately, I pay them for, I think, 15 days uh, that, that, in essence, I got, I got burned on vacation time. So, um, it's funny. We talk about vacation time and employment letters, and I've got everyone with cameras on on my screen. This is amazing. I should have started with this in the beginning. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I, I do it as a cool. Uh, that way I can manage it. And I also want them to earn the right. Now, when this comes up, this particular person uh, has says to me, I've already got vacation time scheduled for two weeks from now. So it, it brings up whether or not you want to give some flexibility with that. Now, this person, ATL, she's been my productivity coach for the last two years that I'm promoting to the ATL position. So I'm going to let her take the vacation time and count it. Uh, outside of the accrual, because I've been in business with her for long enough to know that I'm not really worried about her not working out. Make sense? Questions about the employment letter? Uh, questions, uh, um, is the confidentiality on here too, Em? I'm gonna show you real quick uh, the confidentiality letter. Uh, we will send this out to you as well. It's about a four or five page document. Had it drafted by attorneys a few years ago. Uh, I'm just gonna give it to you real quick to give you an idea of what it looks like. Uh, so as you can see, this is a much stronger legal document. This is a much stronger legal document. So we'll just kind of scroll quickly, Emily. Um, I can get in the weeds and reading through this about the whereas, the now where therefores. Um, th this this allows me to kind of hold them to a non solicit and uh, and uh, and uh, confidentiality. I don't do non competes. Um, I think non competes can get you know dicey on both sides. I was also a victim of a non compete. Um, now, if, if I'm doing something uh, that includes extensive compensation, I would do a non-compete. But um, non-competes, I haven't gotten into yet. Um, Charge of Conus, hey, nice of you to show up, man. Uh, is that 20 vacation days you're talking about? <laughs> so so it, 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 I think he commented on 20 perhaps as vacation days. Now, what I do in my businesses, not my sales team, my businesses, is I will do 10 15 or 20 vacation days out of the gate based on the person's level. So from, a, from an employment standpoint, we've got everyone defined uh, as certain levels of, of leadership. Um, and, and based on that, I will actually start, you know, senior leadership, which is team leader MCA at 20 vacation days. I'll start, um, I'll start middle level, which is director of agent services, assistant MCAs at 15 vacation days. And then I will start um, uh, basic level call coordinators typically at 10 vacation days. If they do not use vacation days, do they roll them over or pay them out? Aaron, can you come in for a sec? Uh, that's an Aaron question. Um, Aaron is my chief operating officer. She oversees the operations of all my market centers as well as the regional operations manager for the region. Hey, Aaron. Uh, question, do we, do they, they don't, don't use the roll them over or pay them out? Uh, we don't pay them out. No, they can roll over up to 40 hours. They, they can roll over up to 40 hours into the next year. Um, no, Kim, I, they don't use them in the next year. They accrue even more. They can only ever roll over 40 hours into the next year. That some of the market centers actually, though, pay out uh, personal time, but not vacation time. Vacation time rolls over. Personal time gets paid out at the end of the year. So you got that? Now, now also, when we get out of business with someone, if, if I... If, if I, uh, if I decide to terminate someone, we also pay out the vacation and personal time off as part of termination? Yeah, we pay out accrued vacation time. So again, another reason why you want to accrue the vacation time, because if, if you do decide to fire someone, a lot of our, our businesses, we pay out the accrued vacation time. So we want to make sure that's really clear because we've also gotten burned on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> without a doubt. So all these things we have that I'm sharing with you is because of experiences that we've had that, uh, that, that hasn't worked out all that well at times. So um, any, yeah, any questions on that? Cool. I, I see the non-compete. Billy Pena, if you, I, I don't have any verbiage on non-compete, Ariel. Um, I've got non-solicits and, uh, and, um, and um, uh, confidentiality. If you do do a non-compete, here's some things you need. There's three aspects to make a non-compete enforceable. Three aspects. Number one is distance. Billy, 20 miles. On average, it's, it's 15 to 20 mile radius. 15 to 20 mile radius. Anything more than 20 miles could make it non-enforceable. Second thing, thank you, Karen, is time. One to two years non-compete. Non um, if it is open-ended, it's going to be non-enforceable. 
So it, it could be non-enforceable. So typically I see anywhere from a one to two year time frame on the non-compete. The third is, did you pay above and beyond for the non-compete? You can't tie a non-compete to someone who just gets a, uh, a, a $35,000 or $40,000 salary. Uh, the non-competes have to be someone where you either paid a signing bonus or they get quarterly bonuses or monthly bonus. There's got to be some income above and beyond to compensate for the value of that non-compete request. So a lot of companies use non-competes because they pay lump sums up front to agents to buy the agent. Companies could do a non-compete because they're, they're stroking a check. Um, Call a banker, Weicker will often do a non-compete because they're stroking a check. So to really be able to have a non-compete that's enforceable, you probably need to do some type of upfront money or some type of bonus that's considered above and beyond because you have to compensate them for that non-compete. We're behind. Just so you know, we're not taking a break. Uh, I want to make sure I cover as much as I can with you uh, before we end at one o'clock. So we're just going to keep rolling through this. If you need to take a break, turn off your camera, go to the restroom, grab me a beer, bring it back. Okay, it's Friday. Uh, and it's five o'clock somewhere as far as I'm concerned. So uh, offer letter, compensation, offer letter, health insurance, non-solicit, non-compete, confidentiality agreement, LLCs, S-Corps. Wow, we covered a lot in the first uh, hour and 18 minutes. Uh, <laughs> when I do drink beer, which is rarely, it's a Michelob Ultra. Otherwise, I'm a Cabernet guy. Um, uh, <laughs> um, any questions about anything we covered? Now, that stuff we just covered, guys, a lot, the majority of that stuff, is it in the book? Is it in the book? No. No. Matter of fact, 85% of what I covered in the last hour and 15 minutes is not in the book. Uh, that's what's cool about our education. <laughs> uh, you can go anywhere and get what's in the book. Um, what I just gave you, not everyone teaches. I've been in CDs where they didn't talk about any of this stuff. Rarely does, does incorporation come up. Health insurance never does. This compensation conversation, I see probably one out of four, one out of five get into that. So uh, again, every time you take this class, you'll get a different experience, which is the, the cool thing about our education. Um, all right, so any final questions on offer letter? You will get a copy of a, uh, probably two different offer letters, as well as a copy of a non-solicit uh, and, uh, and, and confidentiality agreement. Again, I'm gonna stamp sample across them. Um, because I don't want you to just copy and paste. I want you to make sure you go and get proper uh, advice, especially Mike Richardson that's in a different state. I, I don't know how things worked out in Cincinnati. So, um, so we, we then do that. We, we then go for the commitment meeting. We then go for the commitment meeting. I'm not jumping into the PowerPoint. Uh, it's, in, it's in the book, probably around page 176, 177. Joe DeVito, what's up? Quick question. So you know how you mentioned uh, compensation bonuses, family reunion, mega camp, you know, it's worth $2,000, et cetera. What if you have somebody that says, look, I don't want to, I don't want to travel. Can I get that money in cash? Or uh, w would you say, no, it, I'm only paying it if you go. And if you don't go, you lose it. Or do you say, okay, fine. Here's a $2,000 bonus. Nope. Nope. They, 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 they use it or lose it. It's the same thing with health insurance. So, so oftentimes people will say, um, I, I don't need health insurance. Can I just get an extra $400 a month? Right. No, okay. because by law, I've got to offer health insurance to all my employees and they might change somewhere down the road and need that. At which point if they come back and need it, then I'm required to offer it. So this is my compensation. This isn't, um, this isn't, let's make a deal. This isn't let's make a deal. So if they decide that they don't want to benefit from them, then really I'm doing that to get them into, thank you, Dana. I'm using that to get them into training, to get them into culture. The, to me, family reunion in, in May Camp is important because it helps them see there's part of something so much bigger. You know, when they just see the local real estate office, the, the Rainmaker, they don't realize what a big organization they're part of. So, so um, they, they can't swap this out for another type of compensation. Whether or not, if, if they say, oh, well, I don't want to do that, you have to decide whether that's someone you want to be in business with because there may be training opportunities that they need to travel for. We, we, there, there was one person, um, team leader hired, uh, OP hired a team leader, and the person didn't travel. She refused to go to a family reunion in mega camp. <laughs> and, and team leaders, we can't. <laughs> you have to go to FSO. You've got to go to these things. We had one team leader that was hired in, in – um, Rhode Island, Rhode Island, really good guy, great team leader. 
he had an inner ear issue and couldn't medically can't fly. He drove to FSO, mega camp, and family reunion. He was in the team leader role for four years and never missed mega camp or family reunion. That's freaking commitment. <laughs> that, that, that's commitment. Um, so love the chat box. Love the chat box. So we're going to go and we're going to meet with them and we're going to present the offer. Uh, so is that what we do? We just go? Uh, Mike, we're, we're still role playing me and you, if, if you don't mind being my, 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 my guinea pig here. Am I going to go sit down with Mike and say, hey, Mike, here's the offer? Or do you think we have a conversation before that? So you probably have a conversation. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. So we, we have this thing. It's called an expectations conversation. Again, around page 176, 177. If someone can confirm the page number and put it in the chat box, I'd appreciate it. This expectation conversation is, is so important. This kind of sets the guidelines for how we're going to communicate moving forward, further. So, so and I'll kind of role play a couple of these questions. I'm not going to get into the, the weeds on it. Hey, Mike, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being completely candid, how honest do you want me to be with you? 10. 10, great. What, what does that mean to you? Like, if there's a sensitive discussion, thank you, Mike Richardson, 178. If there's a sensitive discussion, and I've got to approach you about perhaps a performance issue, when you say 10, can you, can you give me an example of when someone was that honest with you? Um, an example when someone was that honest with me? Yeah. Um, you know, someone that's, good Lord, I can't even think of a time, but just not worrying about how I'm going to feel. Okay. You just say it, 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 it is, and then we have a discussion. You know, if I get upset, I tell you I'm upset, and you say, okay, well, you can be upset, but this is the way it is. So, 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 so let me give you an example of my 10, Mike. Uh, if you're doing something poorly on the job, um, my 10 would look like this. Hey, Mike, we've got a problem. Can you come and sit down and talk to me? Sure. Whereas an eight would be, hey, Mike, got something I need to talk to you about. Do you have a few minutes? Which one of those feels a little bit better for you? 10. 10. Sweet. 10 it is. So, so do you see what I did there, though? Uh, I, I want to understand. Again, this is a new relationship. I want to understand what a 10 is, give him an example of what that might be in order to make sure he's truly okay with that. Because what I don't need to do is have him in the job for two months and go, hey, Mike, we've got an issue. Come to my office, please. And have it be a complete unraveling of our relationship. Now, if they're, if, if they're a high S, high S is interesting. Uh, you know, high S, steady, supportive, <laughs> loyal, um, consistent, quality, uh, good team member. Um, if you have a high S with a sensitive conversation, I'll often use uh, a sandwich technique. Good, bad, good. <laughs> you know, sit them down. Hey, here's something you're doing really, really well. Let's talk about this. This sucks. And here's something else you're doing really, really well. Or I'll use a pillow technique, which is uh, I'll talk a lot of nice stuff to build a pillow. Uh, <laughs> Jessica, I'm not going to do that in the chat box. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, obviously, Jessica prefers a 10 approach as well because she doesn't believe in the sandwich approach. Um, there's a pillow technique, which is talking all nice things to build a pillow behind them, only to push them over into it. So, so oftentimes, uh, I will also do it with an S over the course of the day, where if I've got a, a sensitive conversation with an S, I'm going to have that conversation uh, early in the day, 9, 10 o'clock in the morning, because um, they're going to be a little bit challenged throughout the day, being bothered by it. And then I'm going to revisit that conversation with them at the end of the day. Um, that way we just kind of do a check-in and see how that is and see how that's going before they go off, go home, and complain about their boss to, uh, to their spouse for the rest of the day. Does that make sense? How are we doing so far? So we're going to have this, this win-win conversation. So on a scale of 1 to 10, I want you to be a 10 back with me, Mike. And, and it's just exactly the same way. I think nothing personal. If you've got a problem, let's just talk about it. It's going to be a business conversation, not a personal conversation. We're going to talk about it. We're going to figure out a resolution. We're going to work through it. Sound good? Sounds good. I, th th this next part, uh, I think th this is so important. Uh, how does someone win with you? you know, give, me a, give me two or three words or examples of what someone could do to win with you. Again, to win with me, just set proper expectations and hold me accountable for those expectations. Uh, and then if I don't understand the expectation, I'll let you know and hopefully we can get on the same page. 
Awesome. And same thing with me. If someone wins with me, Mike, it's, it's got to be honesty. It's got to be communication driven. Um, it's got to be right expectations and, and meeting or exceeding expectations. I do believe goals are immovable objects. So if we're setting a goal together, that's not something we really change. My goal is to hit anywhere from 95 to 115% of the goal. Uh, you know, the 75 or 80% really is not going to work. Um, so, you know, we, we can win by being communicative, being open, being honest, and, uh, and hitting our goals. How does someone lose with you, Mike? Um, honestly, it, it, it goes back to the same thing I just said. Just don't, don't lie to me. Don't, uh, don't lead me in the wrong way. Uh, don't tell me one thing and then come back tomorrow and say that the expectations were different than that. Awesome. Awesome. And so, similar to me, you know, someone loses with me by, by blaming. By blaming someone else instead of taking responsibility for themselves, that kind of drives me nuts. The vic victim mentality, yes. the victim mentality, oh, woe is me, that, 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 that's the way to lose me. Um, and, and without a doubt, if someone says, well, you said, uh, trying to throw words back in my face is something that I do not receive well. Um, so if you ever have a question on what we communicate, let's feel free to talk about it to make sure we're clear. Because um, oftentimes what I found is someone misunderstood something I say. So when they came back and said, well, you said, um, it might have been a misunderstanding of what that communication was. Sound good? So, so again, guys, I just want to give you a brief example of what this win-win and expectations conversation looks like. It goes on to its sensitive issue expectation, job description expectation, job standards expectation, and accountability expectations. What do you notice about these four or five pages? What's on all of them at the bottom? Sign it. Yeah. So this is, this is an expectations contract. This is an expectations contract. We're going to go through, I'm going to fill this out by hand as we're talking, and we're going to sign this at the bottom. So that way we, we, we each are very clear on what the conversation, the, the, the conversation was. That way down the road when they get upset about a, a, a 10 conversation, um, I can go back and show them the document they signed where they gave me permission to talk to them at a 10. All right. Make the offer. Um, I think we talked about the, drafting the conversation. Um, uh, we're not going to get into the role play. Uh, I, I, my, my, my assistant team leader that I, I'm hiring today, uh, we, we had a call set up for this morning to, to go through the, the, the offer. She asked me yesterday, she goes, can you email that over to me? What do you think I said? Nope. Uh, I, I will never email an offer. Um, so I said, hey, I can have the conversation with you today. You know, obviously, I could tell she was excited. She didn't want to wait anymore. Uh, I, I can have the conversation with you today. Now, now I believe in the reveal technique. Do we know what the reveal technique is? Do we have that offer letter here? Oh my God. Poor Emily just jumped out of her skin. Where's that offer letter we just had? Uh, the ATL one. Is that my pile? Oh, here it is. The, the, the reveal technique looks like this. Uh, <laughs> let's review the offer. That's how much they'll see. We'll discuss that section. And then I'll reveal next section. That's what that section looks like. I'm only going to reveal what I want them focused on right now. We're going to go through it section by section, and I'm going to reveal it as we go. So what I did yesterday was I had my screen up. We got in a Zoom call together. We got in a Zoom call together. Uh, Ken, can you please mute your phone or Emily mute Ken? Yeah. Unless you have a question, Ken? Yeah. I'm mute. Um, um, so what I did was I put it in a Word document, and I zoomed into the Word document. that They can only see the part that I wanted, and I slowly scrolled, scrolled down. Um, uh, in, in order to present them piece by piece. Make sense? So again, that's kind of the way. We can go and role play conducting the offer. Um, um, Ariel, wait until they say, what did they say? Then I reveal, Bill, congrats. I'm not sure what you mean, Ariel. You want to explain that? So reveal, like, you know, I, I'm just giving an oh, example. When gotcha. I'm with a client, um, I always say, oh, I just heard back, and I don't say anything until they get back to me, like, well, well, and they get a little nervous and then I reveal and I say, congratulations. And then they're all excited. So that was just my awesome. ad. Awesome. Very cool. Very cool. So i um, conducting the offer. I kind of presented that way. Take it step by step, then reveal and share it. Um, and, and then at the end, I, I wait. 
present it, I wait. Give them a few minutes. If it takes a minute, two minutes. And I'll say, so are you ready to move forward? Or uh, did, that, did that meet the expectations you had? Um, I'm not going to pretend it's negotiable. I'm not going to pretend it's negotiable. It's like, uh, are you ready to move forward? And at the bottom, there's a signature line. Uh, if you're ready to move forward, just need to sign right here. And then what might happen there? Joe, comment? Yeah, I was going to comment. Uh, this is all great, by the way. So thank you for, for doing this. Um, is there a KW Connect video for these different parks? You know, I took Coach's Skills Camp. And we role played some of the life story and some of the, how do you win with me? How do you lose with, which is great. But do you know if there's any video on performing these aspects and the interviewing process as well? Uh, if there is go to, go to the career visioning and KW connect, uh, go to career visioning. And, um, and in that see there's, there's a video tab under career visioning. So if there's any videos there, they'll be there. Um, if not, Emily, add that to our list. Add that to our list. Uh, we'll play videos on each of these. Um, what, what, I'm do what, what I'm doing is I, I'm creating with what we're sending out to you, I'm creating a video library of trainings and things like that. So if you think, you guys think watching well, a video of these role plays would be helpful to you in the future? Yes. So, so I'll have Emily add it to a list over the next few weeks. I'll find some time and I'll do some, some videos of these different role play conversations that I can then post and share with y'all. Nice, nice. Sean Chaconis, I'm gonna have you do some of those videos as well. We're gonna, we're gonna make you a star, man. Um, awesome, so we'll, we'll add that to our list. But in the meantime, check KW Connect and see if they're there under that tab. Um, what was we were just saying before that? Questions, thoughts, comments at this point? Let me pause for a second. We're actually finishing early, guys. We'll be done in the next 10, 15 minutes. How does that sound? Hey, hey Mike, <laughs> how about this is, Billy? How about if they say, um, can, can I get back to you tomorrow? Or, you know, do I have to sign now? Can I speak to my spouse? So, so, so whenever they say, can I speak to my spouse, I'd like to take it home and think it over, without a doubt. We, without that, more than happy to expect your spouse in this decision. Feel free to take it home and think it over. Uh, let me ask you, Billy. So, role play me for a second, Billy. Let me ask you, Billy. Um, is there anything specifically that you feel is missing uh, that you expected to see here that you, you would have signed this today if they had something? Uh, no, I just uh, tend to get in trouble when I make split decisions and not sleep <laughs> on it. Great. Then definitely take it home. When would be a good time for us to get together tomorrow and, and, and follow up on this conversation? Okay. Now, let me go back a step. Um, when I call them, when, and I should have said this before, it's not in the book either. When I call them and say, hey, hey, Billy, I'd, I'd like to chat with you tomorrow uh, and, and discuss an offer with you. Are, are, are you interested in having that meeting? Yeah. Let, let, let me ask you, outside of salary and compensation, outside of salary and compensation, would there be any other reason why we couldn't come to terms on this opportunity and, and you wouldn't accept the job? Outside uh, of salary and compensation, would there be any other factors that would cause you not to move forward with this job? Well, that's when I would kick in and say, well, I would have to talk to my spouse and making sure. With, with, without a doubt, and I, I would expect that. Anything else? No. Why, why, why well, well, at, this, at this point, we, we spent so much time together. So, you know, I guess that person would see if they really want to work with you or not because they wouldn't have gone through the boot camp of this whole thing. Right, right, right. But, 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 but here's why I asked the question. I asked the question because sometimes what's come up here is, well, you know what, um, good question. I've got two other jobs I'm interviewing for. So I'm not sure exactly which one I'm gonna take yet. Typically, that question helps you understand if you're competing with, them on, with anybody else. And it's important to ask the question, outside of salary and, and compensation, is there anything else? Um, it, that's an important thing just to see if there's anything else going on out there. Make sense? Yeah. I, I want to know if it's just a spouse discussion or just a salary discussion or if there's something else. Maybe there's a concern that they have with the job. Oh, well, I understand that your director of agent services sits on the front desk and I'm not sure if I want to sit on the front desk. <laughs> I'm going to find that out now before I make them the offer. So, oh, or your team leader sits on the front desk. The other post, you're doing a great job today, man. It's not that bad. I don't know what people complain about. It's <laughs> yeah, servant leadership at its finest. Or you can play finest. MCA for the last three weeks. 
What's that? I said, or you could be the team leader that plays the MCA for the last three weeks. Oh, like, like no, you have been, No, right? thank you. No. <laughs> All right. So, so again, I'm going to want to find out beforehand if there's anything else that's a concern. Um, and then, again, go in the next day, win-win expectations into the conducting the offer, getting the agreement. Um, let's talk for a second on, on negotiation. On negotiation. Uh, how much flexibility do you have in negotiating this package? Now, here's what I suggest. Chatter, I mean, good point. Some people will say zero. Some people will say zero. You'll find out during the process whether or not they're the type of person that's going to negotiate. Some people, will, exactly, Esteban, some people are, 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 are willing to negotiate, some are not. For an executive assistant, there might not be as much negotiation, whereas if you're hiring a team leader or an MCA, there might be a little bit more. So if you think that there's going to be some negotiation, start two or three thousand dollars lower on the salary start two or three thousand dollars lower on the salary instead of offering 35 perhaps offer 32 that way you have the ability to bump up three thousand my rule of thumb don't negotiate more than seven to ten percent that's what i'm saying if it's 3500 start at 32 give yourself about three thousand dollars to work with um if, if you've got to go more than ten percent you're trying to fit the role to the person instead of finding the person to fit the role so if you think they're going to negotiate, start at 32, be willing to move to 35. If they want to negotiate, I might up the bonuses from 100 to 150 and 250 to 300. Are they performance-based? Are they performance-based? I may offer an end-of-the-year bonus. Hey, well, how do we do this? If we hit our goal by quarter, if we hit our goal quarterly, I'll give you a spot bonus of $1,000 a quarter for every quarter that we hit our goal in. So again, I would keep the salary negotiation rather small and find ways to, to overpay them on money we don't have. You guys write that down? Overpay them on money we don't have. So, so make it bonus and performance-based if you've got to pay additional. Michael, Any other questions? Yeah, Adele. <clears throat> so in the ABA, there was something, and maybe I missed it in here. Uh, it was called Vector 5. And in Vector the, 5, the conscious restraint. It talked about you know high principal person as not to. So I've learned uh, the hard way because I'm always you know in school that when someone is a very very high vector a five like a nine, uh, they're so stubborn that then you know like at first I didn't think that was a big deal and actually it was Mark Willis that said oh yeah wait until you got to prove they're not they're wrong you're you're in big trouble so. I, I don't know where you would find that in here, but if someone you're working with and you're trying to make it a win-win, but it's their way or the highway, um, right. pay attention right. to the tension. Pay attention yep. to the tension because it's speaking volumes. Yep. Makes sense. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Um, awesome. And that's a great point. But unfortunately, we don't have the conscious restraint in, in the KPA. We're kind of missing that to some degree. Now I will tell you, um, I'm being recorded, it's giving me trouble. There's been an occasion where after the KPA, uh, I still might go and use the ABA, especially for like a team leader role. Uh, there, there's been a few times over the last couple of years where I did the ABA as well, just to double check the math, so to speak. So uh, if you find that you're, you're looking for something like that, or if you get the inkling, you might have that during the KPA process, you might still go and use the old tool. I, I used to use the ABA so much. I mean, I did hundreds. I found yep. that so this is a little different, but uh, this has a lot more information that you know. Well, the the, the, K, the the AVA was great for people that did them 30, 40 times a year. For the person that did one hire a year, the AVA was like uh, you know trying to figure out Boolean algebra. So you know the the KPA is much more user for ninety eight percent of the people on this call. So yeah. I got my that's master's the problem. now. What's that? <laughs> I said I had my master's in that one. That yeah, was, no I, kidding I there. I used it all the time, uh, all the time. As awesome. an RD, as an OP, that, that, was, uh, that was huge. All right, that's it. Mute. Awesome. Thoughts, aha, uh -huh. questions? I'm out, I'm out Thursday, Friday that week. Uh, thoughts, aha, uh -huh, questions? Any questions? Uh, let me do this different. Questions. <laughs> questions, and then we'll go to aha's. Uh -huh. 
was I that clear in all my communication? Question, Michael. Hey, Emily, Aaron, I, I communicate very clearly on CV the last couple of days. There's no questions at all about anything I said. That has not been my strength lately. <laughs> I have a question. So, yeah. In regards to the bonuses, would you consider instead of paying them uh, 250, 500, would you consider paying them a percentage of the commission at certain intervals? Uh, so, so, so here's your challenge. As soon as you get into a percentage of a commission, you're crossing the line whether or not that's um, a real estate licensing activity. Whenever you get into percentage sharing, it's almost got to go through the green sheet and be covered via via E and O. So, um, I, 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 I w don't typically uh, encourage it. I, I prefer a flat fee approach. And again, two fifty five hundred. Those are just examples. Um, you guys can adjust based on whatever you think works best for your business. Here's the challenge. I mean. You know, uh, whether it's a million dollar deal or a $300,000 deal, are they doing that much more work on one versus the other? Your executive but if, assistant. But if it's someone that you really want to retain, but you don't want to put the upfront money out, would that be a reason to do it? Repeat that question. If it's someone you want to retain, if it's, if, if it's someone working at a very high level and they have the skills necessary to do the EA position, and proven it to you, um, or have proven it to you in the first couple of you know, months, can that be used to sure. retain them versus an extra hundred dollars, extra five hundred dollars, extra two fifty? Yeah, no, we, 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 without that, I would just keep that percentage relatively low. And when I say low, like under four, <laughs> okay. you, you know, one, two, three percent, I would just I would just keep that low. Yeah, makes sense. So, I, I gotta voice my opinion. I, I, I'm please, Adele. Please, <laughs> on that on that one, that works really well when you're doing, you know, 250, 350, and then because it just happens, you have a deal for a million two, and now this this percent is like like what the what was I thinking? Yeah. So that's one aspect. The second aspect is that um you have to be real careful with money and having people watch your money and what mm -hmm. portion they get of it because um, it can turn the relationship around in a New York minute. Mm -hmm. so, do not let your really admin, mean. do not, do not let your admin see your commission checks. Do not let your admin see your commission checks. They, they, they see all this money coming through and exchanging hands and they, they think they should get paid a whole lot more. So, you they know, don't keep, see the expenses. Keep, they don't see the no, expenses or they go home at a certain time and your day never ends. Yep. Yep. It, it's your lifestyle. It's your lifestyle for them. It's a job. So, you know, that, that's a great point. I'm, I'm glad you added that. And Lisa, I said to you three times, I was going to talk about that and I forgot anyway. So thanks for bringing it up. Um, it, I, I want my admins licensed because they can have more conversations and I want them to bring referrals in. I want them to bring referrals in. I will pay an admin 15, 20, 25% on, on a, a referral on a deal. So, you know, if they bring us four pieces of business a year at a 20% referral, well, that's an extra $2,000 <laughs> that they're making per deal. I'm going to show them how they can make 15, 20, $25,000 uh, in income. Um, but they need to, they need to explain the relationship to me. How do they know this person? I'm going to give them a referral and anyone in their sphere of influence. Um, so I'm going to ask them how, how they met the person because the admin may be part of my, my lead generation plan, access to my database. So I don't want them to just find a, uh, a lead that came in through Zillow and say, hey, here's a referral for you. So I'm going to want to validate the relationship. Um, they know because they do the green sheets. Good point. Good point, Billy. You know, good point. Um, so again, just keep that in mind. I've seen a lot of interesting situations come up because they see uh, how much they're making. Uh, they run, they may run the PL. Your first executive assistant probably won't be. Um, uh, so I, I, so I see the chat box has mixed thoughts on that. Why would we pay our admin a lower referral rate than we pay an agent we don't know? Um, because you're already paying them, because you're already paying them a salary and benefits. You've already got costs incurred to them. That that agent from Utah or Cincinnati uh, that sends me a referral. Mike Richardson, I'll pay you 30%, man. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't have any carrying costs with that person. So, so you, you go higher because of that. The other thing, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's why I would pay them lower than, than the average Joe. 
Now, again, I know people that live on state borders that'll pay 35 and 40% referral fees. Um, 35 and 40% referral fees. Uh, if you have any uh, referrals in Bucks County, PA, you know, Doylestown area, Bucks County, PA, my parents pay a 40% referral. If you have someone going into Bucks County, PA that you, uh, you want them to work with. So, um, you know, it's so something to know. Um, so there, there's a lot of opportunity there. What about a percentage of, up to a certain amount, such as 2% up to $1,000? Sure, d d definitely an idea. Uh, Mike, does the broker of the, uh, why so high? Why so high what? Lisa? Uh, while I'm waiting for her, Joe DeVito, does the broker of an office have to approve the hiring of your admin for compliance? Um, ask, ask, ask your broker. Um, my office, no, the broker doesn't get involved in, in approving an admin. Um, she might be involved in terminating an admin if the admin continues to make mistakes uh, and they can't do it. Uh, why, why so high, Lisa? Um, because a lot of their business is done with referral. Uh, my parents have always been very referral based. So, so they, they like to be the go-to people for New Jersey referring to that area. So they, they reward the relationships at a very high level. So uh, my parents have always been referral based. They put a lot of money into that side of their business. And they find that the, the personal referral is a lot more lawyer, loyal than the Zillow lead. So they'd rather pay higher to other realtors send them business than paying the Zillows and realtor.coms of the world. So and again, my, my, my folks, they do 25 to 35 transactions a year. Um, and it's 100% it's referral based. C Plus, keep in mind, we come from Weikert. So having a 100% split is still a pretty good deal compared to what we used to back in the Weikert days. <laughs> so um, any, any other questions before we wrap up? Ahas, what did you get out of this? What did you get out of I this, Ahas? I have a question. Carly. Pertaining to the re I have a question pertaining to the referral fee. So if your admin is not licensed, can you still pay them the bonus because they're not licensed, so technically that's not legal. Do you just have to put it underneath a different column, essentially, so it looks like you're paying them for something else? Um, I'm not going to answer that. <laughs> All right, any other questions? Any other questions on ahas, ahas, excitements? Um, anything else you got out of the last couple of days that you're gonna take and put into your world that you think will help change your business? Okay. Wow. I must have really, I actually, I'm joking. I've been seeing ahas for the last four days in the chat box. I'm not going to give you guys a, 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 a hard time about ahas. Uh, I don't think I have it yet. I think, I, Michael, I think every single person on here has learned the value of having the right person in their life. Yep. Can I get an, can I get an amen? We have right. We have every amen. single person. Yeah. Because amen. Because no one succeeds alone. And I think that this training, thank you, Michael. I don't know if there's any other OPs, but I really appreciate it, especially seeing people, you know, Mike agents and just all of us, Will Kyler Williams family, really appreciate this. Every single one of us needs to have someone in our world that, that's the right hire and that will help us to succeed at a higher level. No one succeeds alone. This was excellent. Uh, no, no, Adele, you're taking my closing away. You know, this, the closing of this class is no one succeeds alone. You just totally bamboozled me. She just totally took my thunder. No, I am, I am both. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking, Adele. But you're absolutely right. We're going to wrap up with that. Um, when, when Emily sends the email out with, uh, with the videos, with the attachments, uh, with, with, with all those, those um, offer letters, Okay, so it's good, it's good. It might even be Monday because the video has to upload and everything else for us to set it up. When she sends out all the follow-ups, we're also gonna set up an Eventbrite uh, for 30, 16, 90 and success through others. 30, 16, 90 and success through others. We're gonna probably do it around the first week of August. Um, for those of you that were in this, this session, uh, we're gonna offer it to you at $50. It's gonna be two days, two and a half hours a day. We're gonna offer it to you at $50. We're gonna be opening up to the public a little bit down the way at, at the $99 that you guys paid for this. It'll, it'll be offered out the same $99, but for you guys, because you took career visioning, it's only be 50 bucks for you to take those two days of uh, 30, 60, 90 and success through others. Sound good? Cool. All right, here we go. Um, the power of one, the power of one, like, like Adele mentioned there. Um, Albert Einstein 
had Max Talmud, his first mentor. It was Max who introduced a 10-year-old Einstein to key texts in math, science, and philosophy. Max took one, wheel, one meal a week with the Einstein family for six years while guiding young Albert. Um, as a freshman in high school, Walt Disney, one of my personal favorite historical icons, by the way, uh, took night courses at the Chicago Art Institute and became the cartoonist for his school newspaper. After graduation, he wanted to be a newspaper cartoonist but couldn't get a job, so his big brother, Roy, a businessman and banker, um, got him work at an art studio. It was there he learned animation and began creating animated cartoons. cartoons. When Walt was young and through his entire life, his one person was Roy Disney. The world is familiar with the influence that John Lennon and Paul McCartney had on each other's songwriting success. But in the recording studio, there was George Martin, considered one of the greatest record producers of all time. George has often been referred to as the fifth Beatle. Martin's musical expertise helped fill the gaps between the Beatles' raw talents and the sound they wanted to achieve. Most of the Beatles' orchestral arrangements and instrumentation, as well as numerous keyboard parts on the early records were written or performed in collaboration with Martin. Professionally, Oprah Winfrey credits Jeffrey D. Jacobs, the lawyer, agent, manager, and financial advisor, who when Oprah was looking for employment contract advice, persuaded her to establish her own company rather than simply be a talent for hire. Harpo Productions, Inc. was born. No one succeeds alone, no one. Everyone has one person who either means the most to them or was the first to influence, train, or manage them. So when you're embarking on this journey of building a big business to fund a big life and attracting talent as a high level, make sure you take a strong stance on who that first person is because no one succeeds alone. Every hire you make is going to impact your success or give you a challenge. So make sure you make the smart ones. Thank you for being here the last four days. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. Uh, I'm looking forward to 30, 60, 90. Um, I just want to hit, before we wrap up, I want to hit the text box. I see someone mentioned um, they would take this again. The next time I offer it, I'm probably going to do it 7 to 9 a.m. Uh, it might be September, but my next time it's going to be like 7 to 9, 7 to 9, 30 in the morning um, for those people that want to do it before their day gets away from them. So, so the next one will be on a very different schedule. Um, and all these thank yous, I lost those other couple comments. So uh, if, if you do have a question you put there that you want me to answer, feel free to ask it real quick. When's, your, when's 30, 60, 90? Uh, we're, we're confirming it's probably going to be the first week of August. Uh, we will let you know by Monday. We'll okay. let you know by, by Monday. So we're, we're looking to get that uh, out ASAP. Any other questions? 7 to 9 a.m. is great. great. Well, then why, yeah, uh, 30, 60, 90 be at 7 a.m. as well? Well, let me ask you guys. Can we throw a poll up? Let me ask you guys. What would you prefer? 30, 60, 90, 70, 9 a.m.? Or do you want it uh, the, the same time as this? I found we lost a lot of people the last couple of days. You know, we started at 130. Yeah, we're still at 93. Uh, 101 to 90, 90, uh, 93. So I definitely think I saw a lot of people. Okay. Okay, so if you want to throw into the chat, um, um, and we'll, we'll kind of look at this and make a decision based on what we see in the chat. We'll put the chat down later. All righty. Any other thoughts, questions, comments, concerns, excitements? You guys freaking rock. Enjoy your July. Uh, have a successful summer. We'll see you in a few weeks. Have a great day. I'll just turn my video off and mute me. <laughs>